Let's code today. What should we build? Let's build something with Python because we love building and tinkering with Python and it's super in demand. Let's build, I've been seeing a lot of videos around computer vision. This one here, this one here. I've shared them with you before. Let's try and build something with computer vision. I think that would be really fun, a really interesting project if you are someone who is already a programmer or maybe just wants to build something really cool because you're learning how to code or maybe you don't even want to be a programmer, but just something fun to build, a really interesting project. Let's build a face detection app. So when we run this program, it will detect faces through our webcam. I'm so excited. This is gonna be so fun. I. I, I know I need to calm down, but I just, I see those kind of programs. I'm like, I could never be smart enough to build something like that. It's pretty simple to do. So we're gonna do it. Before we do it though, hit that subscribe button for more tech coding and career related videos. And okay, now let's get into it. Well, before we start diving into this project, there are a few things that I really want to break down for you because oftentimes terms like machine learning, AI, generative AI, they're thrown around kind of interchangeably when in reality they are pretty different. I found this image online and I wanted to share it with you because I think it does a really good job of breaking down what the difference is. I'll put it up on screen here. And you can see AI, a broad term that is for a computer or a technology that can mimic human thought, intelligence, or behaviors. So once again, AI, when people reference AI, it's a very broad term. Kind of think of it as an umbrella or even in this image, kind of all encompassing that it doesn't mean a specific thing, if that makes sense. Then though, we go into machine learning, which is systems that use algorithms to mimic the way human brains learn, which we're starting to get a bit more niche, a bit more actual tangible things that these systems are doing. Go down one more into generative AI, systems that learn patterns in existing data sets and output new results, such as text, uh, video, audio, when asked to do so. We've interacted with generative AI a lot when it comes to chatbots, especially with ChatGPT, when it comes to Claude AI, different chatbots that are able to uh, output new results when they are asked to do so. And then also too on this list, they included ChatGPT, I think because of all the hype around it, which is a popular generative AI product that can chat with users. Users ask questions, AKA prompt it, and results are returned. So I wanted to share that with you before we dive into this project because a lot of times I've been seeing online, and I'm guilty of this too, using these terms not necessarily interchangeably, I hope I don't do that anyways, but more so using these terms really without understanding really what they are. And it's so important at least to have a base as to what are these terms and what are the different aspects with AI. One more I wanna cover with you is natural language processing. Natural language processing is a branch of artificial intelligence that essentially deals with uh, the interaction between humans and computers using natural language, hence the natural language processing. And the key goal of natural language processing or NLP is to ensure or enable computers to understand and interpret and manipulate human language. So oftentimes when we are interacting with ChatGPT in the form of text, we are interacting with NLP. Here are some key capabilities of NLP. Text processing and understanding. So NLP techniques like tokenization or part of speech tagging uh, allow computers to read text and extract the meaning of that text. Speech recognition, this converts spoken audio into text that can then be processed by other NLP technologies. So when you are speaking to a computer and it can process this and have a response back. Then there is natural language generation, which can be used to automatically generate well-formed natural sounding text. And once again, I keep on using this re reference, but ChatGPT. So here is the question. I referenced earlier on in this video about generative AI and how it is used with ChatGPT. What is the difference? This is something that got me a little stuck for a while is what is the difference between generative AI and natural language processing? So generative AI, you can think of as it focuses on generating new content such as text, images, audio. Key examples are large language models like GPT-3, ChatGPT uh, that it uses that can generate human-like text, whereas NLP focuses on understanding and processing the human language. So it can include tasks like translation, sentiment analysis, and speech recognition. If you really wanted to sum it up, or if you need a cue card when you're talking to a friend at a party or whatever the case is, generative AI creates new content that seems human-made. Uh, the goal is to be creative. 
So when we think of AI generating art, NLP, natural language processing, aims to understand the human language. Uh, the goal is to process, interpret, and analyze the human language. So there can be some overlap between the two, um, but in general, that is the main difference. All right, now let's get coding. Okay, I am very excited to build this computer vision uh, application for face detection, mainly because I've been seeing so many use cases of computer vision online recently. I'm like, we gotta get into this. So we are going to be using Python for this as mentioned, and then also to OpenCV, which is an open source computer vision library, also to machine learning software. So here are some key or main points about OpenCV. It is one of the most popular libraries uh, for computer vision and image processing. It also too provides a wide variety of functions from face detection, object tracking, image segmentation, and more and it can process images and videos to identify objects, faces, shapes, and colors. It's pretty crazy what it can do. I'm really excited, as you can tell, to tinker around with this. All right, so let's get into it. Let me share my screen here. Okay, you can see my screen. I've imported CV2 and NumPy or NP. Um, I don't know why it's still saying could not be resolved. I have imported both of them and I did just try running this before, you know, recording it and doing it again with you and it works. So I'm I'm not sure, but any experts out there, please let me know down below why I'm having this import problem. Still, I've tried restarting my project. I've tried everything as uh, starting the terminal again, nothing is working. So first things first, to get your virtual environment running, this is the command you will run in a new VS Code project. Once you have that run, you are going to run this command, which will install OpenCV. All right, so then you import CV2 and then also to NumPy. Okay, so I added some more code in here and let's go through what exactly this code is doing. The first one is define, the part, this part of the code is defining a function that we called detect faces, which essentially you can think of as performing face detection on an input image. Uh, so as you can see, def detect faces, we're passing in the image. And then there we are doing when it says gray equals, this is converting the input color image to a gray scale. And this is using OpenCV's uh, function. And this is because I just learned actually as well that face detection works better on grayscale images. Then number three, the faces line is performing an actual face detection using the pre-trained classifier. I am not an expert by any means in uh, computer vision, so just bear with me, but I just think this is such a fun project to build and learn together. Uh, so there we go. Okay, so now number five in the for loop, uh, X, Y, W, and H, we are drawing rectangles around the face shape. Okay, let's keep on going. Okay, you can see I have more code on the screen here. This is actually the final bits of code. So uh, as I mentioned, the for loop is looping through the face array. And um, apparently, I'm still learning, so I have notes on this. It's coordinating the width and height of each detected face. Then if we scroll down a little bit here, return image is just like any other code. We are returning the image with rectangles. Um, and then, so essentially, if we wanted to summarize up this code, it is drawing a blue rectangle around each detected face in the webcam frame. Then what it will do is display it continuously in real time. So that's something I found really fascinating as I was exploring this is the things that go into it you don't think about, being able to display it continuously in real time, constantly there on your face. This is really cool. It's time to run it. Let's see how this goes. Oh wait, we can't run it yet. There's one very important part here. I'll put it up on screen. This is the GitHub um, XML file that you have to download first and input it into your project's uh, root directory. And this is really important because it is essentially a ton of different uh, code as far as the, the meat of the project, you can say. That is why this project can be so small is because this is going to be um, really reading face detection. So you can see here too, in this GitHub, I am using the frontal face default, but there's things like lower body, there's left eye, full body. There is a ton to use, which is pretty wild. And I mean, it's really, it's a huge file, um, but what that will do is help be able to do frontal face detection. All right, pretty cool here. And this is just from the OpenCV GitHub repo. So it's open source, really fun to use. All right, let's get into it. Okay, to run this, all you need to do is run Python. In my case, I'm using Python 3, so Python 3, and uh, then the name of your file. Look at this. It is detecting my face. 
How cool is that? Okay, I'm gonna do a screen recording so you can see it better. One sec here. All right, I hope you enjoyed going through this really fun project with me. At the end of the day, no matter how senior you are, if you are a programmer or not even a programmer, but just want to get your hands in some code or build something really cool, this is a really fun project to uh, tinker with and build. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. I'll link the XML file that you need to download uh, down below so it's easy and accessible for you. And uh, let me know what we should build next. I'm really enjoying building and learning different kind of technologies. You know, I've been a software developer uh, for six plus years now, but I'm always looking for other areas to expand and build onto. And as we've been talking a lot about artificial intelligence, machine learning, computer vision, all these new and advanced technologies, well, not even new, but more popular now, you should say, uh, technologies, I wanted to dive into them. Hit that subscribe button for more tech coding career related videos, and I'll see you all soon. Thanks, everyone.